I think we're live. Hello, 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 hello. Um, it is a beautiful Sunday. Why did I? <laughs> I almost said September. Maybe wishful thinking. March 15th. It's March 15th. I think, are we officially in spring yet? Does anybody know? I don't, when does spring start? I don't know. It's starting to feel like spring, which means I'm starting to get a spring in my step because I love sunshine. And sunshine kills virus. Okay, I'm just going to throw that out there. Just going to throw that out there. Um, tonight, I'm going to do a, something I don't normally do, and that is I'm not going to get political, but I'm going to get real. Okay? So stay tuned for that. I'm not going to jump right into that. I will do that a little bit later in. What I am going to jump right into is all of the cool goodies that I picked up this week. Now, I just remembered again, I forgot to bring something upstairs that I wanted to show you, but that's okay. I have enough examples that will be okay. I did, I ran into a Goodwill, uh, like an hour ago. <laughs> so I have some stuff sitting around me that I have not looked up yet. And I thought it might be fun for you to see how I actually go and look this stuff up and come up with my title and all of that. So um, let me see. So I'm just going to jump into it because I have a lot of stuff here. And if you see something around me and you really want to know more about it, let me know because I don't necessarily get to everything, um, but I get to as much as I can within the hour that we have. So um, one of the things that jumped out to me from the shelf is that is what things do. They call me. They say, hey, pick me up. This is, and if I have this weird light. Oh, I'm thinking I need to angle this up. Just, just. Oh, there we go. Got a glare. Got a glare going. I don't know. Still working out the lighting thing. Um, so here you can see it's brass and it's quite heavy. Um, I have not pulled the tag to see if there's a mark and I have not found a mark, but you can see I paid four bucks for it. Um, mainly because it's a heavy, solid brass. And I'm looking under right now and no, there's no mark. So how do I look this up? How do you begin to look this up? And this is what I tell people, go with what you know. Now, what do you know about it? And now I'm going to need my hands and I'm need, going to need to put it down. And I am going to figure out, I'm going to figure out how to share my screen. Um, I know there's a way. Ooh, there we go. Okay. And I don't know if that's big enough, so I'm going to have to find a way to make that bigger. Okay. So we go with what we know. What we know is this is a brass camel. Now that term alone is gonna bring up way too many results. So I have to decide what I'm gonna call it. Is it a brass camel dish, ashtray? What is it? I'm gonna call it a dish and let's see, it's loud. Let's see what comes up. And, and let me just, here we go. So you can see, um, and I'm in solds and I'm in highest first because I don't care what the cheapest one sold for. I want to see what the highest one sold for. So we have a, they're calling it an ashtray trinket dish. You've got about the same price. And this is a really awesome example for you guys of free shipping pricing versus charging shipping. This Camel sold for basically the same price. It sold for about 15 bucks. One of the sellers just buried that. Well, they've got 1490 shipping, which seems a little high. Because I'll tell you right now, this little bad boy can go in a priority flat rate. And I can tell you this little bad boy only weighs nine ounces. So technically it could go first class, which is how I'll list it. But let's just say it weighed over a pound and it needed to go in a box. So you can see pretty much the seller's going to get the same price. I think the guy who did the free shipping on this one came out ahead when all was said and done. 
Um, but now I know this is a brass chem wash tray. And if I want to know a little bit more about it, I can go in and look in those listings, see if that seller knew something that I didn't, that I could add to my description. But there we go. It was, it was that fast guys doing the research. I used three words in that title. I didn't add anything to it like ornate, um, small, uh, don't add any extra words when you're initially doing your search. Okay. Did that, uh, that make sense? I hope so. All right. Something else that I picked up there was this, and this is not very old. Um, there was just a shelf full of this blue and white pottery, including this frog bank. And he just kind of struck me as cool. I don't know. That's that's how I shop, guys. It just kind of like draws me from the shelf. And I just have to, oh, okay. Um, he does not have a stopper, which could be a little awkward. This cracks me up. Made in China, not for food use. Decorative use only may poison food. Why would you use this for food? I'm just saying. Where would you put food? Okay. Generic sticker, I guess, because it's got made with lead paint or something. Um, that does not scare me. <laughs> so let's do this again. Let me... Uh, let me... Uh, oh, i got to push the button. Oh, did I not share the screen? Wait a minute. Why is this doing something funky now? Did it share the screen before? Now I'm wondering if it did. In case it didn't, see, I'm just learning this technology stuff, guys. In case it didn't, there's a result for the camel. Okay. So what do I know? What do, here, I gotta make sure you can see him. What do I know about this frog? I know he is blue and white and it's a frog and it's a bank. So that's what I'm going to put in. I'm going to put, I'm trying to type past my my uh, microphone, which is not easy. Uh, so we know we have uh, blue. I'm not even going to write the word and. It, it's not necessary. Blue, white, and it's a frog, and it's a bank. I'm adding letters here. Okay, let's see what we get. I got one, I got one, but that's okay because I know they listed it for 1995. Actually, mine's cuter. Mine's, mine's prettier than that one. Here, I'll turn it the same direction. Mine is prettier than that one they had listed for 1999 and sold, right? Okay, um, let's go see if there's any available. So I'm gonna uncheck the sold. Can you hear my daughter's bird? My daughter's bird hears me talking, and I don't know if that's loud enough for you guys to hear, but but he's really loud. <laughs> he's going crazy. All right, so we got a Andrea by Sedek. This is not an Andrea by Sedek. Um, Andrea by Sedek. Da, 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 da. Oh, so maybe that one that sold was. That's okay. I'm still, and you guys don't let this deter you from listing your item at a price that you think is reasonable. Um, I ignore that. I went, I looked at the one that was 20. I'm guessing the one that sold with the best offer sold in the $15 range. I'm good with that. I paid four. I'll take 15 plus shipping. That's a pretty decent profit margin. Um, the other interesting thing, now I don't know a ding darn thing about this. Let me stop sharing the screen. I don't know anything about these, but again, they really jumped out at me from the shelf. They're very steampunk. That's the word that comes in. There's two of them. They were taped together. I have not untaped them yet. I, I really hope they're the same. <laughs> Why would they not be the same, right? No, they've got to be the same. No, they've really got to be the same. No, they're here. Mm -hmm. No. People need to know not to text me right now, too. <laughs> I 
think it's I think it's my ex freaking out because he might not have a job <laughs> with everything that's happening here. That's okay. We're going to talk about that shortly. All right. Let me just. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. They're the same. All right. Now, what really got me on these is yeah, groovy, cool mm -hmm. pattern. But when I turn them over, they're actually BHS tableware made in Britain. There's there's the mark. Um, focus, 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 focus. Come on. There we go. Made in Britain. You don't see a lot of stuff that says made in Britain. So what do we know? We know they're BHS tableware made in Britain. So that's, oh, let me share. Let me share. Uh, share screen. Here we go. All right. Back to the screen. So that's what I'm going to put in. I'm going to put BHS table where, and I'm going to put bowl because that's what I have as a bowl. That's all I'm putting. I don't know the name of the pattern. I don't want to guess what other sellers put in. I'm going to put those three words and see what comes up. Oh, look nothing. Uh, so there's some available with some international sellers. That's interesting. Let's see if any have sold. Okay. So there's, I think, can't quite tell if that's the pattern. Um, so this does not sell or it has not sold in the U.S. Now, one of the things you can do is you can do a Google search. So I can do BHS tableware. I'm just going to do that. Um, we can do images or we can do shopping. I am going to do shopping because that will show you what's on Poshmark and what's on Mercari and what's on Etsy and all kinds of places. It's not strictly just new stuff. Okay, and I'm still, I'm not finding. So this is good. Now, a lot of you get like really frustrated when you can't find the thing that it is that you're listing. You know what I get? I get excited. <laughs> Nobody else has it. That's super cool. I pretty much can price it the way I want to price it. And it is going to come up in search no matter what when somebody is searching for this specific brand. Now, if I'm trying to grab somebody who may not know this brand, but knows they want, let's say, um, and I'll show, let me, let me come back over here to me. Oops, wrong. Uh, me, there I am. Um, if, say they want steampunk dinnerware. Okay, then that's the term that you need to be aware of. Whoever that customer is thinking about, who you want to buy these, uh, you got to put the right terms in. So let me just do a quick uh, gander over here. And let's say we've got a steampunk clock. Let's, I'll use bowl. Yeah, nothing. Not going to be anything. But if I, yeah, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to say that. Um, Dinnerware or tableware. Yeah, nothing. I pretty much, I get to do what I want with these. So I paid, I paid $3 for the pair. I will probably list these for like 20, 25 bucks. Got nothing to lose. I will take offers. I will be happy if I get 15. Um, but that's cool. I love that. I love this. I need armor. What is with my talking tonight? Armor longs? <laughs> I need longer arms. <laughs> longer arms. Okay. Somebody tell me if you can hear the bird. I'm really anxious to know if I next week he's gonna have to be here with me. I'm we're trying to like make it so he can't go downstairs right now. That's why he's not out, but he's gonna have to be out here with me. He just is. He'll be my new little mascot. Um, Dragonware is what this is called. It is, um, this particular one, I believe this is a Nippon. 
It doesn't, it does, okay, it did, it just has pawn, but the NIP that was before the pawn uh, got rubbed off. I don't know. Let's see. Focus, focus, focus. Let me get my face out. Maybe it'll focus. So you can see where it did say, come on, focus camera. Focus. Ah. It's not going to. It sees all that stuff in the background. Anyway, trust me. It said Nippon. So it's an old piece because Nippon, I, ah, I don't know the exact date they stopped using that for things made in Japan, but it was early 20th century. So after that, it went to made in Japan, I believe. Yes. And then it went to occupied Japan and then it went to just Japan. So there's a definite timeline that you can refer to to age things that are made in Japan, which is super cool. So Nippon, this is an old piece of dragonware. Now I happen to know it's called dragonware. If you didn't know it was called dragonware, you could research this by putting in dragon pitcher or creamer, it probably both will come up. Um, it does say hand painted on the bottom. So the likelihood of a seller having put that in is high. Let me, oopsie, I'll get used to these buttons. Okay. So what I would put in, like this is if I didn't know, I know it is a dragon uh, pitcher and it's hand painted. Let's just see what comes up. We only have seven results. We know it's it's not Limoges. Um, and there we go. So now, as I'm doing this research, this isn't enough for you to determine a value on this because you didn't have all the right words in there. But this tells you, oh, they're calling this dragonware. Now you can use the term dragonware. The other thing you can do is take out the hand painted because you don't need it. You need dragon wear. And this is going to, and this is really good if you don't filter too far and you sort by highest first, this gives you a really good education as you're out looking for things of, oh, oh, oh. So <laughs> this listing right here gives me another indication that this is Nippon, you can look at your piece and go, oh, I see the P-O-N. That must be Nippon. See how you can kind of reason your way to figuring out what it is. So at that point, if I was brand new and I kept seeing Nippon and, and that was, and I know that this is the same kind of piece, I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to narrow my search down by going N O P P O N Nippon Dragonware. I just cut the results in half. That makes research easier, right? So then I can kind of go down. I can see which pieces people are really spending the money on. Um, let me go full screen on this so you guys can really see here. And vases obviously are a hit. So vases are a good buy. There's a Stein mug. That's something you could definitely find at a thrift store. And teapots. There's a little teapot, hundred bucks. I'm not super excited just yet. I mean, I'm pretty happy that I found a piece in a pond. Oh, now I'm getting happier because here's a cup and saucer. For $69. Let's see. Let me find this piece. It's probably a creamer since it went with a tea set. I can get down to kind of realizing that. And I mean, this is, I mean, no, it's shaped different than that. That's weird. Um, dum, 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 dum. Gravy boat. Huh. Huh. Where, where are you, my little, my little creamer pitcher thing? 
They want to see what they're calling you. All right, and I wanna bore you guys by going through all of this. But what I would do is go back up here and I'm gonna put in, I'll try picture first, only eight results. See how you can narrow it down a little more. Picture first, not finding it. Let's put in creamer. Because a small picture is usually a creamer. Got more results. You can see the Dragonware has different colorations to it to be on the lookout for. And it's pretty highly collectible, guys. You want to stay on the lookout for it. I'm thinking I'm going to list this piece for about $20. So it's not going to make me rich, but it's going to give me a healthy profit because I only paid two bucks for it. So, um, like I say, I'm always looking for $20 bills. If I can sell five $20 bills a day, I'm doing okay. I mean, I want to do better than that, but that will pay my bills. <laughs> so we would take that. All right. Um, oh, let me show you. If this doesn't scream mid-century, I do not know what does, right? I don't know. Can you see the, uh, the atomic little guys in there? Now, this has absolutely no name on it anywhere that I can see. Oh, I lied. Heat proof colony made in USA. Gosh, I love when stuff has a name. I was going to show you what I was going to do if it didn't have a name. But a name is better. We'll save us some time. So we know it's colony. We know it's made in the USA. And okay, let's just assume you don't know it's mid-century, even though it screams mid-century. So it's a colony and we know it's glass. So the material is always something you can put in here. And again, oh, I guess we'll just call it a pitcher, right? That's kind of the obvious use. It might not be. That might not be the technical name, but let's see. So there's a lot of results for colony glass pitcher. And let me find, now I prefer to find the one I'm selling high up in the results or not at all. And right now we're going lower and lower. Which kind of bums me out. Thought it was better than that. But if we don't find it all, then that does tell me it's better than that because I don't think it is because it's not your ordinary everyday picture. And this is getting closer. Oh, carafe, carafe. See, oh, I'm not sharing my screen. What am I doing? Duh, somebody tell me if I'm not sharing my screen. Come on guys. Uh, let's see. There we go. Here's oh, seven pieces only sold for that. See, this might be better sold in person at the antique mall because, um, yeah. Now, I'm going to take this out and put in carafe just for grins and giggles. We got 17. This is really, really similar, but that looks smaller. This is big. Oh, there it is. Well, shucky darns, it's only worth about 12 bucks and it's missing a lid. Well, that, that does not make me as happy as I thought it was going to, but there we go. Um, we can use, now they did not use mid-century. They did use atomic. Um, this one used mid-century and got 15 bucks. So guess what? Let me come back. This one is going down to the antique booth. I paid four for it. I'm going to put $20 on it at the booth because it's super mid-century and cool. I don't, I might do this. So I have this new project. I rescue things that are missing like their lid and I'm turning them into flower arrangements. Flower arrangement going in this. And then I'm going to able, be able to put it at like $35 or $40. That's what I'm going to do. Yes, uh, that's what I'm going to do. Boop, boop. 
Okay, what else? So I also, oh, let me show you these. These also just scream vintage to me. Now I think someone has gone in and added, I'll show you one at a time. I think somebody went in and added some glitter. I don't know if you can see like the little glitter highlights. So these mm -hmm. have Franklin picture on the back mm -hmm. and um, they are signed by Cherie, Cherie. But, oh, they're just like, they're so sweet. Let me show you the other one. I mean, they are original vintage prints that someone has upcycled a bit with the glitter, probably for a little girl's room, the ballerinas, still really cool. I mean, what does this one say? Oh, this one's got something on the back. Mm, nope, nothing on there. But you can see the back, old, but you can see it has been taken out of the frame and somebody put the glitter. I paid three bucks a piece, guys. I will put $25 a piece down at the antique mall, not have to ship these. Um, if I did list them, I would list them probably together as a pair because shipping one or shipping two together, it's not gonna change much because it's gonna be dimensional. And I would probably put 50, 60 bucks on it. So there's that. Now, I went to a sidewalk sale and to the antique mall yesterday as well. And I'm watching the time because I definitely want to give you the update on the Las Vegas situation with the COVID-19 coronavirus. So hang in there. I'm going to get to that. Um, so what I got there, let's see, up the... On the outside, where all the little dealers were, I found this, this little guy. He is a little pitcher. I don't know if you can tell, or a creamer. And he is marked, let me take the little price tag off. He's marked Tony Wood Studio. Okay. Again, I haven't looked him up yet. I paid five bucks for him. Let's see what he's worth. Let me remember to actually show you my screen again this time. So Tony Wood. I don't know how old Tony Wood is. Tony Wood Studio. It is England. And we know it's an owl, right? So we can put that in. So we got Tony Wood. Oh, internet. I'm going like, wait, but that it is. I'm just picking up all the international stuff. So 12 or 15 international, but pay attention. Pay attention to this. Someone was willing to pay 23 or $22 in shipping. Now, if I list this domestically, I can list him for 25 because the shipping is going to be way, 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 way cheaper. So this little dude is getting listed for $25. I paid five. And then I got, and I'm not going to look up everything. We won't have time, guys. I'm just going to start showing you some of this and what my thinking was behind it. So I ended up with two of these pins that are the same. You can see pin. And it is marked, it's marked Raza. Um, the name value on it is not why I purchased it. I, I would have purchased it if it, was unmarked because they were a dollar each and they are the coolest ram head guys. So I'm pretty sure those are an easy 15, maybe even as much as 20 a piece. Paid a buck a piece. Snoopy. Um, I paid $2 for, oh, you know what? You know what? I only paid $3 for that owl because I talked her, yes, I talked her into rounding it to 15. So yeah, I paid two for this and three for that. So Snoopy vintage switch plate with Woodstock. I paid my $2. Mm -hmm. do, do, do. Um, it is marked monogram products. And then there's like a number on it that, there you go. Um, Snoopy's always a hit. Can't go wrong with, can't go wrong with Snoop. I went inside the mall. Oh, this guy is so heavy. The first thing I came to was this. Come on. 
who would not have bought this guy because he is just so adorable. He's not marked. No, he's not marked. Um, he is a triple planter. Um, he and he's just he's just adorable. He was half price, which made him. Oh man, now I'm forgetting. I think I paid seven fifty for him. I think I paid seven fifty. I'm gonna put twenty five bucks on him down at my antique mall only because of his his size and weight. I'm gonna try to sell him local before having to ship him. But he'll sell. He's cute. He's got the cute factor. And then I got these guys. Now I have to find another um, thimble, which it's generic thimble. These are, and this one's missing his little pin cushion. Or he could be a pin holder. Mm, we could market at that. Anyway, well, this one is complete. <laughs> Anyway, I am tortoise crazy, as you guys may know. Uh, so I didn't necessarily get these for resale, although I'm sure they would. They are Lefton. So they are vintage Lefton little, um, they're pin cushion, thumb, thimble holder tortoises. I paid a dollar each. Gotta love that. What else did I get? Oh, I got these guys. I'm also a little bird crazy. So these are um, cockatoos. They are very vintage. They are uh, Rose, Rose Lane from Pasadena, California. So they are California pottery pieces, probably mid-century. There is a pair. I paid $12.50 for the pair. I have not looked these up yet. My suspicion is I should easily, and this is kind of what I think too, easily get 25 bucks for these. Um, that's on the conservative low end. So that's where I justify buying them because the worst case scenario, I'm going to double my money. I'm going to list them higher than that though. Um, what else did I get there? Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Let's come in here. Check this out. OMG. I only paid five bucks for this. It is a fantastic piece of pottery. Um, again, yeah, it was, you see it? It was half price. And it was um, $10. So I paid $5. It is signed Carolyn on the back. So it's like a, you can't even see that, can you? There it is. Carolyn. Carolyn made this, but Carolyn did a really good job because, I mean, look, look at this guy's face. Just look at the detail in his face. I love him. He's ready for wall hanging and everything. Um, he's an easy 25 bucks. Easy, 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 easy. Go back. Go back. Oh, sit there. Um, I, now, this is one, you know what? I'm really curious about this one. Um, it is... An, a vintage mohair uh, KT Pets by Knickerbockers. Sorry to show you his butt, but that's where his tag is. So KT Pets, Knickerbocker, Siamese cat. Hey, I challenged somebody. Use the technique that I just showed you for research. Tell me what he's worth. How about that? See if we can get that done before the show is over. Yeah, yeah, but I, he's in really good shape and I paid $10 for him. So I don't think I can go wrong. I'm trying to stand him up. Stay, kitty. Kitties don't do what they're told, do they? Um, I've kind of been into like the vintage baskets for using as decor pieces. It's spring, it's basket and flower season. Uh, so I paid five bucks for this one. It is an older basket. And if I wanted to resell it, I should be able to get like 15 bucks for it. Um, and then I also got, oh, I got this. Mm. Hold that thought. Check this out. <laughs> I got this huge basket. It's huge. It's huge. Um, $2 and 50 cents. 
This is how huge it is, guys. It's a huge basket. Um, it's obviously it's going down to the booth. And then I also picked up all of these. I did venture into savers last week and I got all these. I had 20% off. So I paid $3 a bundle. These are the flowers that I'm using to make my little, little project flower pieces. And just to give you an example of the kinds of things that I'm making those in, for instance, when I get lots from the auction, a lot of times there will be pieces that are not worth reselling, such as this chocolate pot missing its lid. But guess what? It will make a spectacular flower arrangement and it will be vintage and somebody will love it. And then I can sell it for $30, $35, where it was a kind of a throwaway piece before. Um, so I've got that smaller pieces that aren't really worth a whole lot all on their own, such as this little guy. It's pretty, it's vintage, um, but it's only worth about 10 bucks. So add a flower arrangement in. Now I've got a 20 to $25 item. Um, also at the antique mall, I picked up this for a dollar. Now on its own value, it's not worth a whole bunch, but I'm going to repurpose by putting some mid-century kind of looking flowers in there. Now you've got a small flower arrangement and I can ask 15 to $20. So think outside the box, guys. Think outside the box. Oh, I forgot. I'm um, also at Savers. I bought a couple of coffee mugs. I do pretty good with coffee mugs. This one I just thought is an easy sell, especially right now, right? I'm sure there's a lot of people who will relate to that. And I paid, it was $1.50 minus 20%, whatever that math is. And then I also picked up this one with the little gnomes. Again, buck 49, it's uh, Christopher, Christopher Vine design from Australia. Thought, okay, well, it's interesting. I gotta use a little barkeeper secret to clean out the inside coffee stains, but it's got a really neat little thing. You know, even if it sells for 10 bucks, going from a dollar to 10, that's a $9 profit minus, minus the fees. You do have the fees. Oh yeah. Like one of my favorite pieces. I don't even, I don't even get why, how, what this was done, but because everything's like in French on the back, but <laughs> here again, it's got turtles, turtles. Um, it's, it's probably going in my kitchen. It's a really just kind of an interesting piece. And I'll show you the back. See, I'm sure, is that upside down? Here we go. I'm sure at one time, this sticker right here probably said what it was, but it doesn't say it now. So I don't know, I might look it up and if it's worth, you know, like $100, I'll sell it. Otherwise it's staying with me. Um, and one more item that you may see behind me. Now that thing really is, as tall as it looks it is a it's not old it's not vintage it's it's home decor it's got a super heavy cast iron base somebody has put ivy going up it and it's got the rooster weather vane thing at the top it was 12 bucks or 12.99 that is a no-brainer for me to take down to the antique mall or it could be sold on Facebook Marketplace and easily double my money. Easily double my money. Like, no brainer. It may even be, I probably will put it closer to $50 down at the booth. So there's that. Um, okay. The moment you've all been waiting for. And uh, I left about <laughs> 20 minutes to kind of get into this. I live in Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs> Las Vegas is one of the tourist capitals of the world. Our entire economy depends on tourism. Okay. So I say this because as things are happening here, they are not to be taken lightly because there is no way you are going to convince these casino owners to do the things they're doing unless they know something we don't. Pure and simple. 
or they've, you know, been given some perks. I just, I can't even fathom what it has taken for Disneyland and, and the Disney resorts to shut down for close to a month. Now, let me give you some information on that, just so you can put this into perspective. My brother worked in cost accounting at Disneyland back in the, I want to say, late 80s, early 90s, somewhere around there. Man, it was a long time ago. Um, so he saw the numbers. He worked with the numbers. And he told me back then, way back then, Disneyland was netting, netting $1 million per day. Now that is after all the payroll, after all the expenses, after all the cost of goods, $1 million a day profit. That's profit. Okay. That was 20, 25 years ago. Can you imagine what that number is today? I mean, Back then, they used to keep it to 40, 50, 60,000 people in the park. And then they then they opened it up to like 80 was their max. They used to limit the amount of people that came through the park. They don't do that anymore. So the amount of money going through that corporation is insane. All right? So just keep that into perspective. And that's just Disneyland. You've got Disney World. And there's um, Orlando Studios is doing the same thing. The money that these corporations are giving up to close down for this virus is an astronomical amount. Okay, I just, I just want to put that into some perspective for you. We're talking billions of dollars, billions of dollars, okay? So now that's been happening and... I just actually, I got shot down this morning by somebody saying, no, 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 no. This is not going to happen. Vegas isn't closing down anything. Yes, they are. <laughs> um, I had some inside information from someone who works for the uh, Caesars Entertainment, which owns half the strip. MGM owns the other half of the strip. Um, it's, it's still not public knowledge that this is going to happen, but you're going to hear it here because you stayed to the end of my show or the end of the video if you're watching this on the replay. They have canceled all events, all conventions, all trade shows. Okay, that already happened. If you were planning to go, you know, to ASD, mm -mm, it's done. It's gone. Um, but it's all, all are being canceled. Okay, that's a huge industry. And then MGM announced that they were closing all the buffets and then other, you know, got on board and um, there's still some buffets open, but that was like the next step, closing the buffets, okay? They're, they're rolling this out as to not cause complete anarchy on the strip. But it was right before I went on the show, guess what? When? And Encore, closing, closing. Um, I have it on very, very good information that the rest of the casinos are going to follow suit. Um, it's kind of like the only way you're going to keep people from intermittent. Like, uh, think about, <laughs> think about the casinos. People are going to these slot machines, playing, coughing, blah, all over touching and then they leave and then somebody else comes over and play in touchy touchy and mm -hmm. like oh come on it's just like that's a that's just a vat of virus waiting to spread if this virus is truly that bad um and the, and see that's the thing i'm not i'm not going crazy people i'm not panicking i'm not i'm not even afraid of the getting sick okay I don't like, I'm already a germaphobe. I already take precautions not to get the flu and, and a cold and, and all of that. I mean, I got my hand sanitizer and, and I'm, I'm like, I stay away from like people who show any symptoms of sickness. What makes this so different is that people are contagious before they even show 
symptoms. So that, that, that has my brain a little like, eh. So, but that's where the social distancing thing comes in. So no handshaking, no hugging, no touchy touchy, you know, wash your hands, don't touch your face. You know, like I, I really realized today when I was in Goodwill, it's like, oh, you know, I have like these urges to like touch my face and I'm like, oh, don't do it. Um, so I got, I got more aware of that piece. Um, but I, I, you know, this, the, the, the thing that kind of breaks my heart about all this is, um, that people are panicking and that people are scared out of their minds. Uh, just go to the grocery stores out here. Um, I don't know what it's like on the East coast. Uh, but out here, man, I, I did go into Walmart. Like I did my grocery shopping last Wednesday. And of course the toilet paper thing's been going and the toilet paper and water thing started early. And I wasn't really like too worried about that. And I, I have enough toilet paper for a couple of weeks. So I mean, we're, we're okay. And I, and I thought, well, they're not shutting down toilet paper factories. Like we're going to get more toilet paper. What people are freaking out about is having to be locked up in their homes for an extended period of time. They're saying two weeks, but we don't know. What if it's, you know, a month, two months. So people are really, really scared that they're not going to be able to go get groceries, that they're not going to be able to leave their homes. And that's what this panic is that we're seeing. Uh, and I, I grocery shopped last week and I, you know, I got, I mean, I got a few extra canned goods, but I don't have the space or the money to buy two months of groceries. I just don't. And I know there's a lot of people like me today. I did go into Walmart to see if I get, get a few more canned goods and some staples. And it's really an eerie feeling when you see the entire meat section is gone, like gone. The only thing that was there was some lamb products and these really awful looking sausagey things nobody wanted. <laughs> it was cracking me up. I should have taken a picture. It's hilarious. But all joking aside, it's like, wow, people are just really, really afraid and panicking. And, and that, that breaks my heart. Um, and it's concerning because there are people who can't stock up and they go to the grocery store when they need something and now there's nothing there for them. Um, our county commissioner came on and did a press conference that says, please, people, we are not running out of food. The trucks are running. The warehouses are full. There is plenty of food to feed everybody. OK, so you come on. It's just uh, don't be selfish. Like I, I'm hoping none of my viewers are doing that. And but if you are, mm, stop being selfish because we are all in this together and together is the way that we can make this go away. That's it. A little common sense. Don't go out and, and party and play and touch everything and be around people. I mean, that's how viruses spread. I get it. It's hard. I mean, they just announced also right before I came on that all Nevada schools are closed. Oh, I actually am happy about this because my kids only go to school for four hours a week. They go to a charter school. It's all online anyway. So I didn't see the reason to send them. So now it's like Wednesday mornings. Yes, I don't have to get up at 6 a.m. <laughs> yes. Okay, sorry. I, I, I get it. This is going to be hard times probably for the next two months. Okay. Us online sellers, I think we're going to be okay because it's we're not talking a year. We're talking a couple months. People are hearing that they're going to get deferments on their utility bills, that their employees are, employers are still going to pay them for the most part. There are going to be some hardships. It's going to happen. But for the most part, people are still going to be buying stuff online because the postal system is still running and still plans to run. That is not shutting down. OK, now don't be one of these sellers who goes out and if you find Clorox wipes or hand sanitizer or what it may don't don't go and, and retail arbitrage right now. Not that stuff. Think outside the box. 
here is my suggestion. Do you know what comes with using a whole lot of hand sanitizer? Come on, you know this, dry hands, dry skin. Start thinking creatively about bundles that include some hand lotion that combat the effects of all the disinfectants and things that people are using, okay? Moisturizers is what people need right now. So go ahead, be creative there. Come up with bundles, you know. Um, think outside the box. If you are a retail arbitrager and you go out and find that kind of stuff. Uh, I got to tell you, I mean, as long as the thrift stores don't shut down, I found some pretty darn good stuff because people aren't out there shopping. So I am going to continue to thrift. <laughs> I, I am not going to get all paranoid. Um, that's going to stop. And from what I've seen on the Facebook groups, y'all have enough of a death pile that now you can finally get through it if you don't feel comfortable going out there and, and shopping at the thrift stores and such. Okay. We're going to be fine. We are all going to get through this. So be considerate and compassionate and kind. Um, gosh, man, there's just like, there is some ugliness going on out there. Ugly, ugly, ugly. And I hate it. It is a sign of the world that we live in now. There's a lot of entitlement and selfishness. And I will just state my opinion here, a lack of Jesus in your life. <laughs> I mean, that, that is where I go to all of this is I am not to be afraid. I am to just believe that this We'll all be under control and we will be fine, but not if we count on all our own, you know, thinking that we are handling the whole situation. So that is my, that is my personal little testimony. Take it as you will. Um, my faith is everything to me. It's everything. Anytime anybody asks me, oh my gosh, I don't even know how you can get through that from some of the stuff I've been through. I can do it on my own. Come on. And I don't know how other people try to get through stuff on their own. It's like, you want to talk to me more about that? I'm available anytime to talk about how faith can get you through anything. Okay. So um, enough with that. And look, I left myself time to spare. Um, yes, absolutely. We, the people. Yes. Um, so and that, and let me just say, that is the other, I, I, I'm going to be completely transparent. After I just said that, let me just let you know, I am not superhuman. And yes, or uh, Friday, Friday the 13th, Friday, I had a meltdown. I honestly had a meltdown because my church announced that they were closing for a couple of weeks. And that kind of sent me into a tizzy that really made my brain hurt. <laughs> like that just felt like the most horrible thing that could happen to me because I mean, that's my place and my people. And I want to be with them during a time like this. Um, so I, I will be honest that I started to really go into a panic on Friday myself. And, um, but by the grace of God, I've been able to come out of it because of my faith getting steered back to what I need to rely on and, and not be worrying about all this other stuff. Now to those saying that this virus is nothing, that is not true. This is a real virus. There are people dying. There are high risk categories of people. And while you yourself might be young and healthy and not in that high risk, the problem is you can carry it to a whole bunch of people who could die. And that is the problem here. The problem is not the virus itself for everyone and how you're going to feel with it. It is who else is going to get it if we don't get this under control, if we don't just limit contact and let it go away. And it will go away. This is what happens. If it doesn't have the hosts to keep going and multiplying, it's going to die off. That is any virus does that, whatever through history, this is what happens. So we're just like 
use some common sense and think about the grandmas and the grandpas and the elderly people that we love and your friends going through chemo and really use some precautions and don't go out and just go, eh, it doesn't bother me. It's not going to affect me. It That's just silly and selfish. Please don't do that. Let's all get through this in two weeks so we can get back to normal. That's my thing. I was like, come on. I want to be back to normal. All right, everyone. Um, with that, I will be putting up some videos this week because um, I'm still catching up with my editing from when my daughter was here. And uh, so I have some fresh stuff to put up this week. So watch for that. And I will be back next Sunday night. Now uh, this is going to, I think I like this time. Let me know if you like this time in the comments. Okay. Um, this time worked out really well for me and I'm going to get some consistency with that. And we're going to do 6 PM Pacific time on Sundays as the live hall show. It's just a good time and it works. And with that, stay safe stay healthy, and most of all, go be profitable and make it fun. All right. See you guys. Have a good night.